Hi everyone, it's Monday roundup time. We're going to bring you up to speed with everything that is happening at Celtic right now until new stuff happens and then this video is out of date. Let's go. Our stats tell us that we've been getting quite a lot of new people on the channel over the last 72 hours or so. Uh, so if you're new, hello. I'm Hamish, this is 67 Hail Hail, this is the Monday Roundup, where we work our way through all of the Celtic news that's happened recently, and basically get you up to date, um, so that if you've had a really heavy weekend, you can just watch this video, and everything can be right in the world, and then as the week goes on, we kind of bring in the other guys on the channel, and have a bit more of a fun time. But Celtic are having a fun time this month. Riley McGree, the Australian international, seems set to become Celtic's fifth signing of the window already. That deal seems as good as done. In fact, there's a Giovanni Van Bronckhorst chance that this deal could be done by the time you're watching this video. Um, given the mood Celtic are in this month, I certainly wouldn't write that off. We're not really messing around or taking our time with anything. But it is very much a matter of when and not if. We're going to be paying around £3 million for him. And Ange is said to have been a major part of the deal. Now, you may think that's pretty obvious. But reports say that Ange is said to have clinched the move. You can certainly see why coming to Celtic, obviously Celtic in their own right, any time would be a big move for McGree. But especially when Ange is here. Uh, Tom Rogic is here as well. Um, it must be quite an enticing move for him. Let's take a brief look then at the Ange Riley relationship. It will probably take us about 45 seconds because there's not too much to it, but it does seem to go back to 2017 when Ange was in his final year of managing the Socceroos and he called up a 17 year old McGree who was playing well for Adelaide at that stage to the national team. Now, McGree didn't actually feature for Australia under Ange at all and actually had to wait until June of last year to finally make his Socceroos debut against Kuwait. But at the time, Ange was, quote, excited about McGree's potential. Now, given that that's just coming up to five years ago and given that Ange will have been following McGree's development since then, it uh, seems like this could be quite a good match for Celtic. Ange's judgment of players has been really good so far and that's players that he's not worked with in the past with the exception of, of Dyson Maida. I think we should be excited about McGree. Is he a player who can come in and immediately be a starter for Celtic? Not totally convinced but I think he can certainly be a, a player who plays a number of games between now and the end of the season and is potentially really high value if Celtic and Ange can get the best out of him. But then again, I'm just a daft guy who hadn't even heard of Rayleigh McGree 36 hours ago. So tomorrow, you and I are going to find out much more about the player. We've got a big insight video planned, so keep an eye out. It'll be out tomorrow. That's Tuesday at 5pm. And this manic January doesn't seem to stop there either because it seems like a permanent move for Jota may be in the offing and may not be far away at all. The Daily Record, yes I know, yesterday said that talks are progressing well and that a deal is close. That's really all I've got to say right now. I've you know, spoken about a permanent deal for Jota so often over the last six weeks or so, so I'm going to keep my powder dry until that deal is confirmed and it seems like it might not be too far away. However, a thing I do have some stuff to say about is more potential transfer news. This one is a bit more ropey. It's not very concrete at all, but there is a reason that I'm telling you about it and that will become clear in a wee minute. Now, the player that we've been linked with is Shabab Al-Ali attacker Mehdi Gayedi. Cracking name. Any name that rhymes is is incredible. He's an Iran international who can play on the left or can play up front. Sounds quite similar to Dyson Maida. The report that I'm talking about is from Iranian outlet Tansnim News, and they say Celtic are determined to sign Gayedi, who has only recently turned 23. Now, the reason that I'm intrigued by what on the face of it seems quite a, a random rumour and one that we normally wouldn't pay any attention to and certainly wouldn't air on the channel, is a clip from Ange speaking to fan media 
in November when he was asked by the homeboys, who are just absolute legends, if there were any other nations where talent was untapped. I still think there's a little bit of a blind spot when it comes to Asia. Um, there's some top quality players already from Japan and, and probably South Korea, the two biggest nations who are already fantastic talents um, that are, have proven themselves at the highest possible level. Um, and there's definitely more there. Uh, I know it, I've, I've lived it. Um, the, the technical level of the players uh, from that side of the world, um, their discipline, um, the way they sort of think about their football careers, they're very, very focused. Um, <clears throat> I think what they've maybe lacked in the past and uh, you know Asian players in particular is that sometimes they've been <clears throat> they've been wary of taking that leap across the world, the other side of the world into the unknown in terms of culture, in terms of these kind of things. And <clears throat> as more and more Japanese players and, and South Korean in particular players have made it here, I think that's encouraged them that they can make that leap and, and, and feel confident about it. Uh, Iran's another nation that's got some fantastic footballers. Um, so, look, I don't want to say too much because I want to sort of corner the market ourselves. Uh, so I don't want to give, I don't want to give too much away, but there's, there's definitely talent. Hmm, and maybe some more of that talent could be coming to Celtic in the shape of Gaeddi. Did you hear the wee mention for Iran there from Angie? Kind of let that one slip a little bit. I remember hearing that at the time and I made a mental note and wondered if Ange was trying to tell us something and perhaps just joining, you know, some numbers together, two and two, for example. Um, we are, we're on the, the cusp of something here. On the subject of press conferences, we do have quite a tasty one lined up tomorrow. Celtic were in touch earlier today to say that our Japanese trio of players, that's obviously Ryo Hatate, Dyson Maida and Yosuke Idiguchi, will be chatting to Celtic fan media tomorrow. Now, we're going to bring you that uh, press conference on Wednesday just because we've already got a tasty video lined up tomorrow. We've got so much content coming that we're actually having to to move things about, um, but that's obviously good for your point of view. So I'll get a chance, hopefully, to ask a question to each of our Japanese players, and you'll hear that on Wednesday. Elsewhere, not a huge amount happening at Celtic, just all roads really leading to a week tonight when Celtic will take on Hibernian at Celtic Park. We should find out whether fans or certainly more than 500 fans, will be in attendance at that game tomorrow when Nicola Sturgeon speaks to Parliament. It still seems like that one's a little bit up in the air, not many assurances from either side. So we'll just wait and see what happens there. I'm going to leave it there for today. A little bit of a shorter video to kick off this week, but you have been spoiled lately with some longer videos on the channel. And if you feel like you need something to tide you over till we're back tomorrow night, I do have a few suggestions. If you're one of the, I think, 4.5% people on the planet who haven't watched a Ryan McGowan interview, then you should go and do that right after I'm finished here. Loads of good reviews for that. Ryan was amazing. Some in-depth stories on Ange, on Tom Rogic at the end. Last night, I got together with John and Stevie for a chat about all things Celtic. And also... The three interviews we did with football radar analyst Sam Robson about our three Japanese signings. I'll link all of those five videos in the description below. Definitely check them out if you've missed out on any of them. And as always, drop us a sub if you're one of the 51% who actually watches and don't subscribe. We're back tomorrow.